Hey everyone, welcome to another C4 Corvette Design Differences video where we take a look at C4 Corvettes and their production from 84 to 96 and what were some of the differences in designs and parts throughout those cars in their run. Today we're going to talk about ZR1s and what makes a ZR1 different than a base model C4. Some quick background information for those of you new to C4s and C4 ZR1s. The ZR1 was produced from 90 to 95. Now a majority of the ZR1s out there were your 90 and 91 model years. Then from 92, 3 and up to 95, the ZR1 production tapered down to lower numbers. I believe 502 in 92 and 448 for 93, 4 and 5. So many of you are familiar with the LT5 engine and it's what truly makes the ZR1 a special car. The LT5 engine was in the 90 to 95 ZR1s. It was a dual overhead cam engine that was rated at 375 horsepower for the 90 and 92 versions and 405 horsepower for the 93 to 95 versions. Now don't let that horsepower number get you uh, wanting one versus the other. Uh, if you have a 90 to 92 LT5, it does not take a lot of work at all to bring it up to the 405 horsepower level and even surpass that. Now, all the LT5 engines were mated to a ZF6 speed transmission, and uh, this transmission is nearly identical to what you would have in a base model Z or, or base model C4. While the LT5 is truly a remarkable engine and is what really is the heart of the beast and makes the C4 ZR1. The LT5 engine is not going to be the main focus of this video. There's lots of other information out there and websites dedicated to just the LT5 itself and all of its differences from the 90 to 95 years. But rather in turn, we are going to take a look at the rest of the car and everything around it of what is the same between a base model and what is different on a ZR1. So for this video, I'm going to be using our personal 1992 Corvette ZR1 to better illustrate some of the differences of a ZR1 versus a base model Corvette. Now, this Corvette is not totally stock, as you can see by the wheels on it. And where needed, we will splice in some other pictures or bring some other parts into view so that you can see what the stock components would look like. So to keep things in order, we are going to take a look at this car by slicing it up into sections. Not literally, but we are going to look at parts from the front of the car to the back of the car. We'll start at the front bumper and we'll move through individual sections as we get to the rear of the car to hopefully cover all of the differences of the ZR1. So let's dive in and take a look at the first section. Starting at the front end of the car, just about everything on the front of the ZR1 is the same as what you would find on a base model. Your front bumper cover, side marker lights, fog lights, all of it is exactly the same. Uh, your hood, it's also uh, the same as well, except there is a minor difference. On your 92 to 95 ZR1s, they added an emblem on the rear sides of the hood, and there was two holes that were made in the side of the hood to mount those emblems, so that makes those hoods just a little bit different. Again, this is a 92 ZR1, so it uses the uh, 91 to 96 style Corvette front bumper cover. Uh, your 90 ZR1 would use the earlier style bumper cover that was used on all 84 through 90 cars. Now those bumper covers on the 90 ZR1s, they are the same from all the way up to 84. There are some differences in the front bumper supports and uh, understructure uh, over those years, but the 90 base model had the same changes applied to those, which what you would have on your 90 ZR1s. So what are some of the differences up in this area of a ZR1? Well, to start with, we need to look underneath the hood below the front passenger headlight, and we will find a small electric vacuum pump that's mounted to the back side of the front bumper support. Now, what this vacuum pump does is it supplies additional vacuum to the LT5 engine in order to operate the butterflies within the uh, injector housings for the secondary injector ports. 
When you first turn the key on of the ZR1, you will hear this pump make a noise for a few seconds as it builds vacuum. If the pump continues to run or cycles very quickly, you will have a leak possibly somewhere in the line that's connected from the pump all the way up to the engine and or somewhere underneath the plenum. Now being that this pump mounts to the back side of the front bumper support, uh, there is a little difference with the front bumper support on a ZR1. Uh, it just has two additional holes drilled in it for mounting the uh, vacuum pump, but otherwise the front bumper support brace is all exactly the same. Moving over to the driver's side in the front of the ZR1, we have another difference between base models and ZR1s. So up in this front area here, we have a electric smog pump that's mounted to the front frame rail for ZR1s. Now for your 90 and 91 base models, they still had an engine mounted smog pump, but the ZR1s would use an electric smog pump that was actually the same as what your LT1 cars started with in 92 and 93. Now for your base model cars, 94, five, and six, they actually changed their smog pump design to a newer style that is actually carried over into some of the early C5 models as well. So, but this 92 to 93 smog pump for the LT1s was used for all 90 through 95 ZR1s. So with these differences up here in the front of a ZR1 with the vacuum pump and the smog pump, uh, there is a difference in the wiring harness then that goes along the front of the ZR1. Uh, mainly you'll have the electrical connections for the vacuum pump on the uh, passenger side where you wouldn't have those in the wiring harness from a base model. Now there are differences throughout 90 to 95 ZR1s in the front wiring harness. Uh, for example, 90s will have different bulb sockets for the front fog lights um, and there will be other changes throughout. but. The wiring harnesses for ZR1s are unique for those reasons up front. Now we'll move back to the second area for items around the engine, front frame, and suspension of the car. So in this area of the car, we have the LT5 engine itself, which is the biggest difference for a ZR1. Now, like I said earlier in the video, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time talking on specifically the LT5, but I am gonna go and look at some of the items around the LT5 engine and what items are different and specific for a ZR1 and what items are actually the same as what you would have on a base model car. Now, before I do go any further there, I just wanted to say, um, don't hold it against me for the uh, top of this motor being a different color than what the cam covers are. It does need painted. It's on my to-do list here. And it's not as uh, clean as maybe some of the other cars out there, um, but my wife does use this car. It does get driven. So, uh, But starting in front of the LT5, uh, we go up to the area where we have our radiator air condition condenser uh, up in the uh, upper and lower shrouds here. And this is all the same as what you would have on a base model. That being your AC condenser, your radiator, same as what you would have on a base model six-speed car. There are tag differences on those radiators themselves. Um, but as I said, your upper, lower radiator shrouds, the air filter box, the radiator, um, I'm sorry, the uh, dual fans mounted behind, those are the same as what you would have on a base model. But one additional thing you do have up here is a engine oil cooler that's mounted up in with the uh, condenser and radiator underneath the shroud there. Now on the passenger side, you can actually see the lines coming around where they would connect into the oil cooler up in this area. One other difference you will have up in this area, that upper radiator shroud, physically exactly the same as what would be on the base model, but you do have decals that are on the top uh, for your accessory drive belt routing uh, and also your emissions labels that do make that shroud specific to ZR1. There are some other differences in those shrouds between your uh, 90, 91, 92, 93, uh, various years of ZR1s where you have minor variations in those shrouds, but those same differences are present in the uh, base models as well. One other item to note is a difference up in this front area here is the air filter housing itself. And uh, boy, there's springtime here. A lot of flies are starting to fly all over this car. So excuse me if I wave them out of the way. 
Uh, but uh, on this air filter housing, they're actually the same for the 90 to 95 ZR1s as what you had on your 90 to 93 base models. Now I mentioned before about the smog pump that's up in the passenger side using the same as the 92, 93 base cars. So your 94, 5, and 6 base models their smog pump had an additional hose that would come up and connect to the side of the air filter housing. That'd be on the uh, driver's side here, just about near the top, there would be an additional hose up in this area. But since the ZR1 for 90 to 95 used that earlier style uh, 92, 93 base model smog pump, they did not have that hose, and therefore the air filter housing for your 94 and 5s ZR1s, same as what you have on 93 and earlier base model cars. So moving back from those items up in the front of the LT5 there, once you get up to the air intake duct, that's where things start to get specific to the LT5. You can notice that that air intake duct up there is uh, shorter and wider uh, for the throttle body connection on the LT5. Uh, but Moving back then around the LT5, we'll pick out a few items here, uh, specifically on this passenger side that are the same and some items that are different for ZR1s. So first off, this radiator surge tank, uh, exactly the same as all 90 to 96 models. Uh, there's nothing special there. We do have uh, the lines, the coolant lines that connect off the top of the surge tank lines. These are actually the same as what you would have on a 90 to 94 base model car. Now, these lines did change in the 95 and 96 base models as there were some different connection points on the uh, LT1 and LT6 engines at that time. But your 95 ZR1s would still use the 94 and earlier style of coolant lines connected to the surge tank. There's also a difference though in these lines in the uh, color and finish of them. There's a uh, hard line section uh, just down here at the end of these tubes. And uh, these are painted black on this car. So for ZR1s, these are painted black for 90 up until partway through 92. And then after that, they change to a natural aluminum finish. Um, your base models, uh, same thing. They were only painted black though on those 90 to 91. And then your 92, three and four had a natural aluminum finish but they are the same line uh, base model to ZR1. Now there was also another line in this area. Um, we have, it's actually underneath this AC line, which is specific to ZR1s, um, but we have a uh, coolant line here that's actually specific to ZR1s as well. These route from the heater core uh, up into the thermostat housing, which is actually an external mounted housing on the LT5 engine. And uh, because of that, the coolant lines that you would have on a base model mount directly to the engine and run to the heater core. And so these lines have a uh, different routing path as they go to the uh, external mounted uh, thermostat housing. These also are painted black. Uh, same differences as what you had in these coolant lines here uh, on ZR1s, painted black 90 to partway through 92. And then your 90, uh, later part of 92, 93, four, fives are all a natural aluminum finish. So up here on the front suspension of the car, uh, a ZR1 front suspension is really basically all the same as what you would have on a base model of the time. Uh, starting with the front spring, which we can't see, there were various spring rates that were available in different years. Some people may be surprised to find out that a ZR1 did not have the stiffest spring that was available at the time, but that went to uh, Z07 cars. One option though that ZR1s did get was the FX3 ride control. And here on top of the shock, you can see the FX3 actuator that's on top of here. And this is what actually adjusts the shock between its three uh, ride control setting places. Now these were also an option on your base model cars as well, um, but all of your um, ZR1s did have them. When you have an FX3 actuator, there's actually a little bit of a difference in this uh, center piece of your inner fender here where there's a notch cut out in the back of it to allow clearance for that actuator to be mounted. Now, even on cars that did not have FX3, that center trim piece does have a line on the back side of where to cut it in case you were putting it onto a car that did have an FX3 actuator and needed clearance. So, continuing on with the suspension though, uh, we move on to uh, the brakes. 
Uh, the brakes on a, a ZR1, they did get the uh, heavy duty J55 13 inch front rotors. However, this was an option on uh, some of your 94 and earlier cars. Now your 95, 96 base models, that became the standard brake package that was available on those cars then there later. There's one other difference in the suspension area here uh, that we can't see, and that's going to be the K-member itself. That would be the cross member that's supporting the whole engine. Um, your 90 and 91 ZR1s actually use the same K-member that you would have for a 92 through 96 base model car. The mounting points are different. Um, on the bottom of it where the engine, engine uh, mounts would go to the K-member there. Uh, so a 9091ZR1 uses a 92 through 96 base model K member. Uh, one other thing that we can't see up here that uh, is different as well, there was a power steering cooler on all ZR1s. Uh, yes, some of the, your uh, other cars at the same time, your base models did have power steering cooler options, uh, but the ZR1 power steering cooler is specific to ZR1 just because of the uh, line routings and the connection points on that uh, power steering core itself. So with the front frame rail sections of uh, ZR1s, there is one, albeit very small difference. Now this is the front frame rail uh, cut off of a ZR1 here. And the one point that I wanted to show you here is this small little bracket. Now, as I mentioned before, LT5s have an externally mounted thermostat housing. And on a ZR1, this little bracket is what you mount that thermostat housing to on the uh, lower part of the passenger side. Now, there's holes that are drilled and tapped into the frame uh, for mounting that bracket, but those holes are present in frame rail sections of base model cars of the same time. In this next section, we're going to move back to items around the firewall area of the car. So in this section here, one of the more obvious differences we have is the brake booster used on ZR1s. Now here, the brake booster on a ZR1 is a larger all-metal housing design, whereas a base model would have been a plastic housing at the same time frame. We do have a difference in the vacuum lines that come off of the brake booster over to the LT5 just because of the difference in mounting points on the engine. Uh, the master cylinder that's attached to the brake booster though, these however are not changed over from what the other cars have. You do have differences in the internals of these over various years. The reservoir's designs changed uh, throughout the years of ZR1 as well. But one other difference you'll have up here with your ZR1s is going to be how the lines connect to the master cylinder. On a ZR1, you can see right in here, we have a section of stainless uh, braided lines, whereas a base model would have hard lines all the way up to the master cylinder itself, but ZR1s used a short section of braided line in this area here. One of the other differences in the ZR1 in this area of the car is going to be the ECM itself obviously for controlling the LT5 engine. Now the ECMs for your ZR1s were the same for same design for 90 to 95. There are some internal differences for programming and things throughout those years, but your casing design was the same for all ZR1s. Now this case design is actually the same that was used on your 90 to 93 base model cars. That meaning the bracket that this ECM sits in is the same as what you would have on a 90 to 93 car. Now a 94, 5, and 6 base model, their ECMs changed to an all aluminum housing and the uh, bracket which holds the ECM is of a different design for those years. So the 94 and 95 ZR1 still use the 93 and earlier base model bracket. Now one of the other things that we have on this bracket here on a ZR1 is there's an additional sensor that's mounted to the underside of the ECM bracket. Now, even if this bracket would come from a base model, 90 to 93 again, <clears throat> that bracket will still have the mounting, excuse me, the mounting provision for that sensor there. Now, this whole bracket assembly, it mounts onto an arm from the underside, which we can't see here, but that arm goes back and mounts to, or is, part of a plate 
that is mounted between the firewall and the brake booster. Now the base model cars have those plates as well for mounting the ECM in this location, but the ZR1 plate that mounts in that area is actually just a slightly bit thicker than what you would have on a uh, base model car. So another item that we have in this general area here, um, of course we have a lot of other electrical um, relays and that, they're all ZR1 specific. We have our throttle cables and our cruise control cables here, just inboard of the ECM. Now these are going to be all specific for the ZR1 as well. Um, the ASR, the um, traction control motor here, uh, that is, the motor itself is the same as what you would have on 92 to 96 base cars. And forgive me, this was not installed on 90 and 91 ZR1s. It first came on 92, three, four, and five. And uh, the motor is the same as what you would have on base model cars. Uh, however, the cover and the bracket which it hold, or holds the motor is different for ZR1s from what you would have on the base model. Uh, you also have a cruise control servo module over here. Uh, this is exactly the same as what you would have on a base model car. Moving over to the other side of the car here on the firewall, we come to the area of the blower box and the surge tank, which I also um, previously touched on here. Uh, when you first look at this area, it seems like it's very similar to a base car, but there is some differences here. So the first switch on the inside of the blower box housing, um, right in this area here, this is a removable panel that can actually be taken out with a couple bolts around here, move it out of the way, and then you're able to access the number eight spark plug hole in the back of the LT5, and also the cam uh, cover bolts that are around the back of the motor in this area here. A base model car would not have a removable section in the blower box in this piece here. Now moving over onto the outboard side of the blower box here, where this surge tank is, and how it mounts to the blower box. This is actually different than what you would have on a um, base model car. A ZR1 will have provisions in this blower box right here for the surge tank to mount directly to the blower box itself. On a base model car, there's actually a bracket that the surge tank mounts to and wraps over top of the blower box and then uses these two bolts on the inside of the uh, blower housing to attach themselves. So everything else over here, your blower motor, uh, your blower control module, all the same as what you would find on a base model. Um, the AC evaporator, if you look inside this box, it looks very similar to what you'd have on a base model as well. Um, but when you look real close, the bottom line connection that comes out of this blower box from that AC evaporator has a slight bend in it towards the inside of the car where a base model uh, doesn't have that bend in it. Uh, you do, do also have the fuel lines that come up, mount to this blower box here as well, and of course those are all ZR1 specific items. So everything else along the firewall of a ZR1 is the same as what you would have on a base model. That being your wiper arms, the wiper motor, uh, this weather strip piece here, uh, the washer bottle, um, all those items are the same between ZR1 and base model. Uh, but also in this area, the other difference that you have is the windshield itself. Now a ZR1 windshield, it's physically the same cut as what you would have on any base model. Um, but what it does have is a solar film that's actually layered in the glass. Now this solar film was actually meant to help reduce interior temperatures uh, because the AC compressor on an LT5 is actually smaller than what they uh, would have liked to have designed at the time. So the solar uh, film in the windshield was added to keep the interior temperatures down. Now one problem with these uh, solar uh, windshields here is they have a really um, notorious problem of starting to delaminate. This one here is actually really bad. Um, you can see a, a haziness that's all the way around the outside edges of the glass. And it's actually starting to get some uh, horizontal lines even through the center part of the glass. Uh, something I'll need to replace in the future here. Now, other ZR1 owners experiencing this same issue. Uh, at one time, there was um, reproduction windshields available specifically for ZR1s with this solar film in there. Uh, though some owners that aren't really as concerned about originality um, and want the uh, lower cost option is you can just take a base model windshield and apply it to a ZR1 just the same. You just wouldn't have that uh, solar film look to the uh, windshield itself. <clears throat> One other item though that these windshields have, 
there's a cutout in the uh, lower portion of the glass there of that solar film. What that cutout was for was for any type of uh, electronic device that needed a range to go from the inside to the outside of the car, say like a garage door opener. Uh, that cutout was put in there so that this film wouldn't interfere with that device at all. Now that cutout there, there are a few variations in the size of that cutout uh, amongst different years of ZR1s, but they do all have that cutout in the solar film of the windshields. Next, we'll move further towards the rear of the car to go over items in both the interior and exterior of the car. Before we move to the interior of the ZR1 here, we might as well talk about the transmission since it's also in this area of the car. So the ZF6 speed transmission is nearly identical to what you would have had in a base model C4 at the same time, as I mentioned that previously. The difference is in the input shaft length of the transmission. Now you also have differences with your bell housing and your clutch components, your pressure plates, uh, everything in there because the dimensions of the back of the LT5 engine are different than what you would have had in a typical small block Chevy at the time, your L98s and your LT1s. The back of the LT5 is actually more similar to the LSs of today. So therefore, that input shaft on this transmission is longer. Um, and just to show that, um, I can add a picture in here. This is a base model ZF6 uh, next to a ZR1 ZF6 speed transmission. And you can see the differences in the length. Now, you can take a base model ZF6 speed transmission and mate it up to an LT5, as long as you have the bell housing and all the clutch components, and you just need to change that input shaft to be the longer one from the uh, ZR1 ZF6 speed into your base model transmission. Otherwise, everything else in that transmission is the same. Now, one other thing, since we are in this area, we should talk about the exhaust. The exhaust of a ZR1 is different than what you would have on a base model. Uh, one of the surprising things is actually for your 90 to 92 ZR1s, and I have right here, you have your exhaust manifold header, and you have the catalytic converter is actually included in the same setup. Now, this was 90 to 92 on your 93 and to 95 versions, uh, this was actually separated that the catalytic converter was not part of this. Uh, but this piece being like this uh, does make your exhaust system for the ZR1s uh, different than what you had on your base model cars. So I promise we'll get to the interior of this car here in a minute, but before I do that, I just wanna jump back to uh, some items around the engine bay. And it's gonna to relate to uh, the doors and everything else as we move on here. But up in the front area of the car here, you have your front inner fender panels that go around the front wheel. You have three pieces. You have the front section, the middle section, and the rear section. You also have a fourth piece that's mounted onto the underside of the hood. Now, these pieces are all the same on a base model as what they would be on a ZR1, except for this rear panel right here. Now, this rear panel is different for a ZR1 because of the rocker panel differences. Now a rocker panel on a ZR1 has a curved out design as compared to what a base model is, where a base model just kind of more slopes inward. So this inner fender piece down on the very bottom edge, there's actually a little bump out in that fender piece so that it matches up with the rocker panel cover. If you would take a base model rear inner fender section, it's not going to meet the rocker panel correctly in this area, and that's what makes this piece here specific to a ZR1. Uh, also in this area, we have the fender panels, um, the lower fender panels, the battery covers. These are the same between a base model and a ZR1. No differences in these other than the style changes um, on your 95 and your 90s, which would still have a uh, molding strip along here and say tune port injection on them. Before we jump to the inside of the car, we need to talk about the doors. So doors of the ZR1 are specific and are different than what a base model is. Now, many of you are um, already aware that a ZR1 is wider than what a base model car is, but for some of you that are new to these cars, uh, that may be some new information to you. But yes, the rear of a ZR1 is wider than what a base model is, and that increase in width actually starts in the doors themselves. It actually starts all the way up from the front of the doors and the door starts to grow wider as it gets towards the back of the car. Now this becomes mostly apparent whenever you go to 
reach for the door handle and notice the difference in uh, width between the top of the door handle and the glass as compared to what you would have on a base model car. Now, another thing on the door here, you also have a molding strip that's down along the center. Now, these molding strips, you had your different styles. The 90 would be a black molding strip, same as all the other base model cars, and your 91 and later is a painted molding strip. Now, these molding pieces, they are physically the same between base models and ZR1s. However, there is one small difference. A base model will have a bolt at the front and the rear, and then it will be held to the door shell with a series of clips all down along the center, whereas ZR1 will use bolts from front to rear all the way down the door. Now you can take a base model molding with the clips and you can apply it to a ZR1 door. It's going to hold in and secure just fine, but that's just one of the differences that these are all bolted on ZR1s and clips and bolts on base models. So everything else about the ZR1 doors is the same as what you would have on a base model as far as other than the width, but as far as internally, your window regulators, uh, your latch components, everything else, your mirrors, all the same base model ZR1s, there's no difference. There is one very minor difference on the inside of the door and that has to do with the door latch itself and just one little bracket of the latch. And for that here, I have a door latch with the lock rods from a ZR1 and one also from a base model. Now these latches are the same. Uh, they may, one may be a left and one may be a right here, but the difference is actually this little bracket. What this little bracket here does is it actually attaches from the latch to the key lock cylinder and the door handle. Now because the ZR1 door is wider, this latch, this little tiny bracket on here has this bend in it so that it can make up the increased width of the door handle being further away from where the latch normally mounts. If we look at this one here, this is from a base model car, you can see that that latch is just a straight piece of metal, whereas the ZR1 has that offset notch in it. So here we are on the inside of the ZR1. And for the interior, basically, it's really identical to what you would have in a base model car. There's nothing additional or badges anywhere that say ZR1 or LT5. Any plates that you would see installed on a cup holder door uh, that say LT5 and engine horsepower, that was an aftermarket add-on item. Nothing came like that uh, originally from the factory. Now, probably the most predominant feature that people know about on the interior ZR1s is the valet key. And that is this key here mounted right underneath the radio. And what this key does is whenever you have it in normal, it will limit engine power. And when you turn it to full, you'll get full engine power. What it does is it actually controls the additional injectors. So when you turn it to full, it allows the secondary injectors to operate. It also activates the secondary fuel pump uh, to create more power. Now, these switches and this radio bezel um, that makes this component here specific to ZR1s. These bezels, they do have differences over the years from 90 to 95, and they follow the same guidelines of what you would have in a base model, where 90, 91, these would be all gray, 92, 93, they're black, 94 and five, black as well, little bit differences to the dash design, but they follow the same thing as what a base model would. Now on the radio bezels themselves for the ZR1s, you do have another difference. And that would be this little indicator light here next to the valet key. On a 90, this light is not here. 91 through 95, this light will turn on when the car is running and you turn it to the on position. For a 90, up here in your DIC display, there is an additional spot up here that would read full engine power whenever the switch is turned to the on position. Now the DICs for the 90 and 91, uh, they are the same as what's in a base model. Uh, however, the difference would be in the overlay screen that's over the top of them. A 90 will have the words printed full engine power and in a base model, they'll just never light up because there's not a circuitry for that valet switch but in the ZR1, they would. A 91, the DIC looks very similar, and the only difference is the overlay screen that's attached to the top of a 91 doesn't have full engine power written in it. Same as between the base and the ZR1 car. 
One of the other differences on the inside of a ZR1 is the gauge cluster itself. Now a gauge cluster on a ZR1 has a tachometer that goes to 8,000 RPMs as you can see here on this one. All of your ZR1s 90 to 95 had an 8,000 um, RPM tachometer where your base models would have a, had a tachometer that only goes to 6,000 RPMs. Now the same changes are also present in those uh, gauge clusters where you have 90 and 91s being alike, 92, 93, and 94, 95 with your Keller changes and your design changes of the uh, gauge cluster throughout. But ZR1's always to an 8,000 RPM tachometer. The 96 Grand Sports with the LT4s, um, not just your Grand Sports, but your six-speed LT4 cars of 96 would also have an 8,000 RPM tachometer and would be the same gauge cluster that would have been applied in a 94 or 95 ZR1. Now, really, other than that, that's about all the differences that there is on the interior of a ZR1. Yes, you have sport seats and you have your ride control selection uh, switch in the, in the middle of the uh, power seat switches. You did have um, a few 92 ZR1s that had a uh, dr only driver side uh, power seat switch option. There was manual power seats on the side. Um, your climate control, you had um, some of your very early 90s had a manual climate control instead of the automatic, but most uh, ZR1s have the automatic climate control. There's a um, programmer that controls the climate control that is specific to a ZR1. And then the interior wiring harness throughout the dash would be specific to a ZR1, uh, really so that it has the connections for the uh, additional valet key in here. Um, otherwise, everything else basically the same that you would have on another six-speed car of the same side or of the same year. Again, sport seats were an option on base models as well, so was the FX3. There is one other very minor difference that we have inside a ZR1, and we'll come back to that once we get into our next sections. Next, we will move to the last section of this video and go over items for the rear ends of these cars. Here we are at the back of this ZR1, which is the feature of a ZR1 that really makes it easy to tell the difference between a ZR1 and a base model when you can't see any other exterior badges on the car or the hood isn't open where you can see the LT5 engine. So as I mentioned before, the ZR1s are wider in the rear of the car and the increased width starts at the front of the doors and continues growing through the quarter panels to the rear bumper. Now, how much wider is one of these cars than a base model? Well, if you measure from the outsides of the bumper, a ZR1 is roughly four inches wider than a base model car. But what are all the different components that makes up this difference in width? Well, first off, the increase width in these cars is made up by the body panels only and not anything as far as the chassis or frame structure. So the quarter panels are growing in width on these cars over a base model, just as long as your, as well as your doors, like I mentioned earlier. Uh, in this section of the car here, you also have your molding strips and this lower dog leg piece below the molding strip here. These are specific to a ZR1 as well. Now, like I mentioned before on the molding strips, a 90 would have the black molding strips, 91 through 95 has the painted molding strips, same as you would have on your base model cars. Now this molding strip here is actually different on a ZR1 than it is on a base model. And to show that, I have a molding strip here from a base model car. So if I hold that up next to it here, you can see how the ZR1 molding strip is just a little bit shorter than what you would have for the base model version. You can also see the difference of the body panel thickness when you look at the door jam area between a ZR1 and a base model. So on a ZR1, you can see the increased width that you have between the door jam and the outside of the quarter panel. And when you compare that with a base model, you'll see that the ZR1 is much thicker in this area. One of the other predominant visual differences in the rear of a ZR1 is the rear wheels themselves. Now, as I mentioned before, these are not the original wheels on this car, but I do have an original wheel for this car right here. I'll just pull it over. 
So this is an original 91 to 92 saw blade 11 inch wide ZR1 rear wheel. Uh, these wheels are easy to spot because of the increased depth down to the lug nut area in the center. And the 11 inch wide wheels of the ZR1 is what makes up the difference in the increased width of the quarter panels of these cars. So if you would go in behind the wheel, everything as far as your brakes, suspension, everything on the rear suspension, half shafts, knuckles, all of that between a ZR1 and a base model, well, a six speed base model, they're the same because of the Dana 44 rear end. Now, also in this area, you have your inner fender panels. Those are gonna be different on the ZR1. They're a little bit wider to come out and meet the edge of the quarter panel. You have some rear braces and brackets for the bumper and behind the wheel. Uh, those mount from the frame out to the rear bumper. They're a little bit longer on a ZR1 because of the increased width again. But really, the wheel is the predominant feature that makes up the difference in the increased width. Now, the ZR1 styles of wheels, they changed along with the base model styles of wheels. So the 90 ZR1 wheel looks very much like the 90 base model wheel. The rears will have the uh, sunken in center around the lug nuts because they're 11 inches wide. 91, 92, a uh, silver colored finish. Uh, 93, the saw blade just like these 92s here, except they have a machine finish. And uh, then they're a more natural aluminum looking color. You also have your 94 and 95 ZR1 wheels. Those don't actually coincide with what was on base model cars at the time. That's where you have your five spoke A mold designs. Now those wheels are commonly referred to as the ZR1 wheel as there's replicas out there very available for those. Lots of people put them on their base models. But really the 11 inch wide A mold wheels are the true ZR1 wheels. Moving back to the inside of the car, I'd mentioned that there was one other minor interior difference on ZR1s that I didn't mention previously. And what that would be is if we look right at the back of the center console, you're gonna see a small little hook that's sticking up just above the end here. You got this hook point here. And then if we turn and look at the back, we got another one here and there will be another corresponding point on the opposite side of the car as well. So what these points are is they're tie down points for a rear wheel. Now, the rear wheels, as I just went over, are 11 inches wide. And that width was too much to fit in the spare tire carriers underneath the back of these cars. So what they did is if you drop down a spare tire carrier from a ZR1, there will be an additional bag stored in there. And that is your flat tire storage bag. So if you would be out and you get a flat uh, with a ZR1 and it's one of your rear wheels, you would drop your spare tire down and you could take your flat wheel or flat tire and put it in the bag and then store it with inside the car. Now there also would be a set of straps that would hook to those points. And unfortunately I don't have the straps for this car in the gray interior color, uh, but I probably got a picture that I can put up of some from another color uh, that we've had in the past here. Uh, but anyways, you would strap the tire inside the back of the car to hold it down. Now you would have these on all 90 to 95 ZR1s. You also had it on the 96 Grand Sports as well, the Grand Sport Coupes. The Grand Sport Coupes had 11 inch wide wheels just like the ZR1s did. The convertibles did not. But the uh, Grand Sport Coupes would come with the same spare tire bag and tie down points to put a flat rear tire inside the rear storage compartment. So here we are at the back rear bumper of this ZR1. And as I mentioned many times before, these are wider than what you have on the base model cars. Now when the ZR1s first came out in 1990, the rear bumper was the predominant difference that you could see in these cars because a 90 ZR1 would use this style of rear bumper, but the older style front end uh, on the uh, front bumper. Now, 91 through 95, still you had the same bumper style, but very similar now to what you had on your base model cars, just wider. Now, one of the differences with these bumpers is going to be the molding strips themselves. So on a 90, as I mentioned before, where they have the black molding strips, and 91 through 95 uh, all have the painted moldings. Now, on a 90, 
uh, base model and on a ZR1, your black molding strips that would go here are a removable piece to that bumper cover. On your 91 through 96 base model C4s, that molding strip here is actually molded into the bumper cover itself, not on a ZR1. 91 through 95 ZR1s, these molding pieces are a removable piece. They will bolt on and off of here. So one of the other differences we have on the back of the ZR1 here is going to be the emblem that's on the uh, right rear side there. The ZR1 emblem was on all 90 to 95 rear bumpers right there. Uh, on your 90 and 91 cars, that was the only exterior ZR1 badge that was on the car. 92 through 95, as I mentioned before, added a ZR1 emblem at the rear sides of the hood. All right, so what I have here is one other difference to show you between the ZR1, and this is the actual rear bumper impact bar honeycomb absorber. This would all be mounted directly right in behind here on a ZR1. Now, this piece here is actually the same as what you would have on a base model. This whole metal structure, everything, exactly the same as what you would have on any other 90 to 95 base model. The difference here is in the absorber section. Now this is a uh, honeycomb absorber style. You had these on some of your earlier ZR1s. Later they changed to a foam uh, impact absorber on there, uh, but still your basic changes apply. Now these portions here in the center are the same as what you would have on a um, base model. But your difference are on these two outside pieces. These are longer than what you would have on a base model and is what makes up the increased difference in width to that rear bumper so that you have some support at this far outside corner here. But everything else as far as the aluminum structure, uh, how the fuel tank would mount, spare tire carrier, everything else is the same as what you would have on a base model. So still on the rear bumper here, uh, just wanted to touch on the lights for a few moments here. Um, all of the lights in the back of a ZR1 are the same as what you would have in a 91 to 95, 96 base model Corvette. Your tail lights, your reverse lights, all the same. So your 90 Corvette ZR1 is going to use the 91 to 96 um, tail lights and reverse lights. Now one of the differences that you will have also back here is going to be this license plate filler. So this whole opening back here is bigger on a ZR1 than what you have on a base model, again, for the increased width. And this license plate holder here actually is, has two little strips on the side of it in between where the reverse lights are. And this part here is actually where part of that width difference is on the ZR1 rear bumper versus a base model. Now, these um, license plate filler pieces they are, um, they're difficult to find sometimes. Uh, for a lot of owners who buy these cars, that filler panel ends up going missing and um, they don't come up for sale all that often. So sometimes that's a little bit of a hard piece to find. Now, also in this area, you have a light that's up underneath here to shine on the license plate. In a base model, you would have one light in this area, but in a ZR1, there's two lights in this area for the license plate. So it's just, again, because of the increased width. Now, the other thing is we do not have a third brake light in this bumper here. It's up on the top, and um, we'll talk about that more in a moment. Um, but with all these, uh, these lights, the two lights back here, no third brake light, that makes the wiring harness that's going along inside the back bumper cover here different for a ZR1 as well, because you're gonna have uh, no third brake light connection, but two connections for your um, license plate lights. One other thing that I do wanna mention while I'm back here is gonna be this Corvette emblem here. So the Corvette emblem in the back of the rear bumper cover, uh, this is an add-on piece that was on all of your 90 to 95 ZR1s. Now, the 90 ZR1 has a Corvette emblem that's a little bit smaller than this. It's actually the same of what you would have on your base model uh, 90s from the time. Once you got to 91, on your base model cars, the Corvette was actually inlaid in the bumper cover, and the ZR1s was an additional emblem that was added on. And this emblem grew in size for your 91 to 95 ZR1s versus what it was in the 90s. 
Now, one other thing we'll touch on real quick since I'm back here, that's gonna be the exhaust tips. Now, again, this is not the original exhaust for the car, but you do have the same difference that you would have in a base model on the exhaust where you have circular tips for 90, 91, and then rectangular tips for 92 through 95. Again, there are differences with the rest of the exhaust, as I mentioned earlier, um, but you do still have the rectangular to circular difference in the tips for your ZR1s, same as in the base models. So as I mentioned before, the third brake light is another difference in the ZR1s. So for 90 to 95 ZR1s, they all had the third brake light mounted up on top of the roof. This was the same as in your 86 through 90 uh, base model coupes. Now, being that it's still up here, this light, the housing, everything for your later model ZR1s, it's all the same as what you would have had on a 90 to, uh, or I'm sorry, an 86 to uh, 90 coupe. But then that, that makes one difference in the glass hatch, albeit a very small difference. And for that, we need to open the hatch. And we're going to look underneath here. And on the underside, you have these two holes within the glass with Torx bolts in them. And that is what holds the housing down for that third brake light. Now, an 86 through 90 coupe is going to have a glass just like this that has those holes in it. Now, there is a very small difference. You can't tell on this. And actually, it's really hard to tell anyways where a, the stock tint color, since this is tinted, you won't see anything, but a stock tint color in a 91 car is a little bit different in that glass than what you would have in a 90 and earlier car. The tint in a 90 and earlier car is kind of more clear, and then a 91 and later has a little bit more of a greenish hue to the glass. So a ZR1 win or rear hatch will have that little bit more greenish hue to it, but then it also has those two additional holes for mounting that third brake light, where you wouldn't have that in the tint style of a, the stock tint style for a 91 and later coupe. Only the ZR1s would have those additional holes up at the top. So some of the last features here that make a ZR1 unique are still on the rear end here. And one of those would be the antenna. Now the antenna, the motor itself and all that is basically the same as what you have in a base model, uh, but the position is different because, again, of the width of the rear of the car. So the ZR1 antenna actually has more distance between the outside of the quarter panel and the hole opening is what you would have on a base model. Being that that hole is in a different spot, the grommet that is around that antenna bezel is actually just a little bit different as well. It's a slightly bit thicker than maybe what you would have on a base model. Now, to show another difference that we have on the antenna itself, I have one of those here. And this is a power antenna motor. Uh, this one, I believe, is from a 91 ZR1. Now, everything as far as the antenna motor, the mast, all that, is gonna be the same as what you would have on a base model, except for this bracket right here. So this bracket is actually what mounts right into this area between the quarter panel and the rear bumper. And this bracket is a different length on the ZR1s is what you have on your base models because that antenna location is further inboard than what you have on the base model. So that bracket makes this unique. There's also one other little thing about this makes it unique. You have the little nub that's on top of the antenna mast. These are a little bit bigger on a ZR1 than what they are on a base model. So you have that difference. And then along with the antennas themselves, there are differences, the same as what you have in base models uh, between your 90 to 92 antennas, your 93 and later. That all comes down to the wiring connection style that's on the end of the antenna connection itself. Uh, you have those same changes in the base model, but really the big things are this bracket and the little tip on top of the antenna mast. So one other item that we have back here, we have the gas door lid. Now gas door lids on ZR1s, they are the same on ZR1s as they are on all 84 to 96 coupes. Uh, there's one little difference that you'll have on some of your later cars. This one doesn't have it, but there's words that are written in here on the inside of the base plate. 
And some of your later ZR1s will have different wording on those than what you have on your base model cars. One other thing that I didn't mention earlier back here is the uh, fuel pump. So as I mentioned before, the fuel tank is the same in a ZR1 as it is in a base model, but your fuel sending unit and your fuel pumps are different. Uh, so to illustrate that, I do have a ZR1 uh, fuel sending unit here. So the one thing that you do notice about this sending unit is it has two pumps on it. You have a primary pump and you have a secondary pump. So whenever the uh, valet key is put into the full position and then it calls for it, the secondary pump will supply additional fuel pressure for those additional eight injectors that will operate. So this fuel pump sending unit, uh, same 90 to 95 ZR1s, uh, but this is another item that is unique for the ZR1s. Well, that just about does it for the differences in C4 ZR1s versus your C4 base model Corvettes. Now, like with these videos, it's not possible to mention every single little difference, but hopefully we caught most of them and that you learned something that you didn't know before watching this video. Now, if you need any further information or you're looking for parts for your C4 Corvette, check out our website, MiraCorvette.com, or give us a call. We'll be glad to help you out with what you're uh, looking for. So, as always, thank you for watching.